We're in Padua, and Lucentio wants to marry Bianca. Beautiful, sweet, obedient, and, of course, as hot and steaming as a fresh cow pat in a frosty meadow. I must say, I like her. My kind of girl. You don't think it might be nice to give her a few tiny extra elements? What elements did you have in mind, Kate? Oh, I don't know. A character, maybe? A personality? Kate, you weren't listening. I, I told you. She's mild, sweet, obedient and hot. <laughs> how much character and personality do you want? <laughs> Must say, onto a winner here, mate. Call a Centio Fools for Hop Yanker and marries her. Perfect plot, job done. Let's go to the pub. Oh, <laughs> but, but I'm not finished. That's not all of it. You've got enough, mate. Quit while you're ahead. That's what I keep saying. You do this all the time. Overcomplicate things. You come up with a perfectly nice plot of boy meets girl, boy gets girl, and then you ruin it with all your usual rubbish of mistaken identities, absurd coincidences, supernatural interventions. People not recognising their own lovers because they're wearing tiny, tiny masks. <laughs> it's just daft. Actually, I think Mr Shakespeare's plot be already too complex. Really, Kate? How so? I've, I've scarce begun it. Well, boy meets girl, boy gets girl. Why not just say boy owns girl and leave it at that? Perhaps displaying your leading lady alluringly clad and in a cage. Actually, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> Look, I, I don't need a new idea or a new plot, complex or otherwise. I've got a plot and it's brilliant. Lucentio loves Bianca, but Bianca has a sister, Catherine, who be all that Bianca is not. She be bold, assertive, opinionated, feisty. Can I play her? No, Kate. <laughs> so, of course, no one would dream of marrying her. Well, obviously, you'd have to be insane. Thus, Bianca and Catherine's dad declares that none may marry sweet Bianca until he's offloaded Bolingbroke busting Catherine. <laughs> now, this is good. Enter Lucentio's pal, Petruchio. A charming but feckless fellow. Loving him already. He needs a fortune and he doesn't care who he marries to get it. What a rogue, my kind of guy. He offers to take Catherine and commences to break her spirit by starving her, refusing her clothing and depriving her of sleep for days on end. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> and does Catherine cut this pervert's throat in the night with a rusty knife? No, she allows herself to be happily broken and is soon hilariously agreeing with everything her husband says. I, I, I have a lot of fun with that. Driven to a compliance bordering on dementia, Ka <laughs> Catherine accepts that the sun is the moon and, and that an old man is a beautiful young maiden. <laughs> that's that's going to get a big laugh, that bossy burger raving Tonto. Love yeah. it. I, I've took it already. Anyway, Lucentio marries Bianca and Catherine marries Petruchio and at the wedding, the reformed Harridan delivers a lengthy monologue about women being obedient to men. What, there's even a moral? <laughs> oh, I don't know how you do it, Will. Yeah, I've got to say, it's a winner. Mm. It'll be your most popular comedy yet. Mr Shakespeare, please do not write this appalling story. Too late. Did it on the coach from Stratters. Burbage has it now. It's called The Taming of the Shrew. Oh, <laughs> best title ever. <laughs> End of. I have invented a new phrase, Mr Shakespeare, especially for you. Really, Kate? That's very flattering. Yes, it is. For you are strong as if made from chain, exciting like a pageant. You have risen up from nowhere as if a city on water. You are a guiding light and the very heart of a man. Your words move me, sweet Kate, but I would fain know their meaning. Why, mail is made from chain, a pageant is a show, the city on water be naught but Venice, the light that guides is a star, and the heart of a man is his soul. Put them all together and you get... Mail, show, Venice, star soul. 